Preston Physics Grade 11 Energy Work and Power Note 5 Conservation of Energy. During this note, we're going to talk about the conservation of energy. Now, we talked about this a little bit when we did transformations of energy, but the conservation of energy is exactly what it was when we talked about it in Grade 10. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but like we said in our first note, it can be changed from one form into another. Now, what this means is the amount of energy that we have at the beginning has to be equal to the amount of energy that we have at the end, as long as none of it's lost to the environment. And this can happen, and we're going to deal with that in our next note. But energy in has to equal energy out. It's the law of conservation of energy. To kind of look at this, we're going to talk about a pendulum problem where we're going to have the pendulum swinging directly at the side where we're holding it up. We then let it go. It swings down and we're going to deal with it at three spots, kind of in between the side and the bottom, the side and at the bottom. Now in the first spot, we have all gravitational potential energy. We're holding it there. We let it go. It's all gravity that pulls it down. During the second spot, we still have some gravitational potential because it can move down still, but now we have half of it being kinetic energy. And then finally at the bottom, we can't go any further down, so it's all kinetic energy. The energy is changing from gravitational potential to kinetic, but it's never being lost. It's always the same number if we were to calculate it. For this next example, we're looking at a ball rolling down a ramp. We're going to make three graphs. One's going to be gravitational potential compared to time, one will be kinetic compared to time, and one will be total energy compared to time. Now we're going to look at it at four points as it's rolling down that ramp. If we look at the ball at the top of the ramp, let's say it has four joules of energy. As it's rolling down, it's losing its gravitational potential energy at each spot. It's making a line as though it's going down the ramp. Now it's also starting at zero meters per second. So it starts going slow and then progressively picks up speed as it accelerates down the ramp. This again happens in a linear fashion. If we compare these two both on the same graph, so if we draw our kinetic energy going up and our gravitational potential going down, we can then add our two energies together. And notice that four plus zero is four, 3 plus 1 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 3, and 0 plus 4 are all 4. The total energy remains the same throughout the system. We don't change. We just transfer it from gravitational to kinetic energy. We're now going to look at the first two examples on the next page. In the first example, we have a clown throwing a ball 8.2 meters in the air. To solve this question, we're going to set up what are called HMV charts, where we represent our initial and final values in these charts, talking about our height, our mass, and our velocity. Now, sometimes the mass won't influence, but sometimes it will. So here we start with a height of zero. We don't have a mass because it doesn't matter. It's the same mass the whole time. We get a final height of 8.2, and the final height at the top, we're going to have zero meters per second. So we use conservation of energy, where our total energy is the same in both cases. We always have kinetic and gravitational, so we're looking at both of those. That's our total energy in is our total energy out. We have kinetic energy plus gravitational in both cases. So we get 1 half mv squared plus mgh equals 1 half mv prime squared plus mgh prime, meaning our second value of h and v. Now when we look at this, in the first part we have a height of zero, and in the second part we have a velocity of zero. So our gravitational at the start is zero, and our kinetic at the end is zero. We also have masses that we can cancel out in each case. So we're left with 1 half v squared equals gh prime. So our velocity equals the square root of 2 gh prime. When we substitute our values in and solve, we get 12.7 meters per second. Now in the second example, we're looking at a surfer going down a wave. We're going to say that this 65 kilogram surfer starts at a velocity of zero at the top of the wave 
and then surfs down the wave and gets a velocity of 18.1 meters per second at the end. We know he's at the bottom, so he's at height zero at the end, but we don't know what the height at the start of this wave was. We're going to use our energy equals energy again. We have kinetic energy and gravitational to start, and kinetic energy and gravitational to finish. But we know our initial velocity is zero, and our final height is zero. So our initial kinetic energy and our final gravitational energy will both be zero in these cases. When we substitute our values in, we also know we can cancel out our masses. So we're left with GH equals half V squared prime. That means H is equal to half V squared prime over 2G. We substitute our values in and we get 16.7 meters high. We'll look at the last example in class tomorrow. The questions associated with this note are 15 to 21 in your yellow duotang.